XML External Entity Injection, or XXE, is a well-known and documented vulnerability, but it's often overlooked due to the decline in XML's popularity. However, some applications actually unknowingly support XML even if it's not intentionally used. So today we'll do a quick primer and then let's take a look at how we go about finding and exploiting this vulnerability even when we don't see XML in our proxied traffic. Cyber attacks that leverage weak or stolen passwords, credentials, and secrets are the world's most pervasive cybersecurity issue. And that's why I trust Keeper. Keeper Security's next generation privileged access management solution delivers enterprise grade passwords, secrets, and privileged connection management in one unified platform. Unlike legacy PAM solutions, Keeper is fast and easy to deploy, agentless and clientless, and has no implementation fees. Plus, Keeper is FedRAMP authorized. Start your 14-day free trial today at keeper.io slash TCM. And of course, there is a link in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. We're going to keep our primer short, but if you like this kind of content, then let me know down in the comments below and we'll be sure to dive a little deeper on this topic. So first up, what is XML anyway? And why should we use it? XML XML is extensible markup language and lets us define and store data in a tree-like structure as you can see here. We have our user object and the properties of our user are stored in these custom tags. Unfortunately, in the specification, we also have custom entities, which can be defined in the DTD or document type definition. And this leads us nicely to XML external entity injection. You see, in this example, we're creating a custom entity and then referencing it in the documents. It's somewhat similar to a variable. It has a name and a value, but if we change this code to look something like this, then the value is set to a remote file or resource. In simple cases, we can read files on the target system and we'll also often look to utilize this attack to achieve server-side request forgery too. If you want to know more about SSRF, then check out this video here. But for now, let's jump into a lab. Here we are at our lab. And the first thing I like to do is go through the application and figure out what functionality we have available to us. So we can't create an account or register or sign in here, but it looks like we can go in and take a look at some of these products. So let's take a look at the adult space hopper. We scroll down and looks like we can check stock. So we press this and we get the units back and we can check these in different countries as well. So given that there's not much else for us to explore within the actual application itself, we head over to Burp Suite and let's take a look at this endpoint. So here we have post to slash product slash stock. And if we expand this a little bit, scroll down, we can see that we have some XML. So this is obviously a really important place where we need to be testing for external entities injection. So all I'm going to do here is press control R to send this to repeater. You can also right click and click send to repeater. And let's come over to here and send the request once again to make sure that it's properly formed and working, which it looks like it is. I prefer working in raw mode, so I'm gonna switch over to raw, and then this is gonna be a little bit easier to work with. So when we're testing for XML external entities injection, then what we want to do is create an external entity and then reference it in the documents. And the lucky thing about this here is we have an example document to work with. Sometimes you might not know what tags to use or something might be happening where you need to do a little bit of guesswork or fuzzing. But in this case, we have a pretty good idea of what the application expects and how it might handle it. So if I didn't know how to exploit this vulnerability or if I didn't have notes on it from the past, then my first point of call is payloads or the things. And here we have XML external entities page. And you can see that it starts off by describing the difference between an internal entity and an external one. And the external one, of course, uses this keyword system. And if we come down, maybe we want to come to detect the vulnerability. And we can see that we have the DTD here, so the doc type and then we have replace, and then we have this entity example, and the value is dough. So let's actually take this, paste this into our documents, and then we need to reference this entity. So we want to reference example. And as you can see here, it's been referenced in this example. So ampersand example semicolon, and we'll just copy this 
and paste this in. So let's put this in the first one. Send this to the application and we do get an error from the application because it was probably expecting an integer, but we also get the word dough reflected. So if we change this to Jeremy, for example, we get Jeremy reflected back. Now that's useful to see that we can actually influence the application behavior. And this is what we should be on the lookout for all the time when we're testing something. We should never go from zero to full exploitation. We should figure out what the application does, what is the impact, how we can influence it, and then carry on. Although sometimes we get lucky and, you know, we just click and bam, we get RCE. Not all that often though, unfortunately. So let's try and upgrade this to retrieving files as the example says here. And we have this doc type once again, and then we have these entities. And what we want, I think is this one. So we want to grab etc passwd, and you can see that it's referencing the file here. So let's try this instead of our Jeremy entity, we have the file entity, and we will reference file here. And as you do that, you can see that we indeed have the etc passwd file. Now here, if I was doing a CTF, I'd probably go a little bit further and think about what files can I read? So I'd think about, okay, we have Carlos and Peter. Can I read uh, configuration files? Could I steal an SSH key? So for example, can we go home? carlos.ssh idrsa Oops. and try and steal the private key, for example. But in this case, I think if we come back, you can see that we've solved the lab. Upgrading your vulnerabilities is always something to be thinking about though, especially if you're doing bug bounty, can you demonstrate further impact or maximum impact to get the most value out of your finding? And of course, during a pen test, you need to understand the full scope of the vulnerabilities so that you can give good recommendations to the developers to fix the issue. There's one more lab that I quickly want to show you because it's quite an important edge case to look for. And it shows that even when we don't see XML within the application, we can still find XXE injection. So here we are once again at another lab and we want to come down and take a look at this application. And I'm just gonna click view post and see what we can find. And here there's actually a lot of stuff to test. So we have these comments and we can add a name and we can upload a file. We need to leave an email address and a website. And it looks like our input is also reflected to the page. So as a tester, I'm thinking, okay, we need to check for cross-site scripting or JavaScript injection. We need to check for malicious file uploads, especially if it's something like a PHP driven application where we could potentially upload a shell. Could we overwrite a HT access file? Could we overwrite a configuration file and things like this? And then of course, we also have injection points in the name, email and website too. So a lot to be thinking about uh, when we're just looking at this small section of the app. However, we do know that we're on the hunt for XXE. So let's take a look. I'm just going to put in some test data. So let's put this is a test. And then I'm just going to put my name Alex and we can upload a file here. So I think if I just go to downloads, Oh, we don't have anything there, but actually I think where I was a second ago, here we have a couple of files. This these are actually to exploit the image magic vulnerability, but they should do the trick. So let's just select those. And then alex at alex.com and test.com. Post comment. Ah, please match the requested format. What if we just ignore that? That does the trick. All right, so let's come over to Burp Suite and come back to our proxy, HTTP history, pull this down a little bit, and then come down and find the post slash post slash comment endpoints. Take another quick look and we see that we get 302 found. So this is probably a successful submission and we can see our image here and we can see the email and we can see the website as well. So let's send this to repeater, come over to repeater, send this again and we get the same thing again. So this is good. And here we don't see any XML. So we don't see anything that would say, hey, we need to test XML external entities. However, something we should test for is whenever we have file upload, can we upload files such as SVG, such as docx and other files that support XML? So in this case, all I'm gonna do is I'm going to try and remove the image and I'm just gonna put image, image here as a placeholder. And then what I wanna do is 
change the content type to SVG and see whether it will accept an SVG file. Now we might actually need to also add the magic bytes, but let's see how we get on so far. And we get an internal server error. So we get SVG transcoder exited with error null. So this looks like it might work if we have an actual valid SVG file. So let's come over to payloads all the things and let's see whether we can find a payload for images. And I'm just gonna control F, XXE inside SVG. All right, so let's give this a try. This actually looks like what we need uh, because it's using etc hostname. And I suspect if I recall, that's, that's the target of the lab. So let's just take this, come back over, paste this here, have a quick read of our exploits. All looks good to me. So let's send this. And once again, we get SVG transcoder exited. So let's try SVG plus XML. Error once again. Let's see whether this actually did come up though. And we're still getting an issue, but maybe let's try and remove all of the line breaks. That might fix our payload. Nope. And, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to cut this and I'm actually just going to nip into my host, paste this into notepad. And you can't see this, but actually I can see the issue here. There is a hidden special character at the start of my payload. And I'll take a quick screenshot of this so you can see this afterwards. So what's actually happened is since I've copied this from here, it's obviously taken a special character from the formatting of the page and pasted that in. I wonder if mousepad will also pick this up. Aha, here you can see we have a special character. So this is probably breaking our payload. So let's cut this. Don't save that. Paste this back in, and then we get 302 found. Nice. So let's come back to our lab and refresh the page. And you can see we got it a bunch of times. And if we scroll in, you can just about see the host name within the image. And if I hover over here, you can see that we get 8430F9E4A21B. And if we submit that, we will clear the lab as this is the host name of the target machine. It's always worth checking for things like SVGs when we have file uploads. And sometimes when you see that an application is using something like JSON, try converting it to XML and see whether the application continues to function and then go ahead and test for XXE injection following that as well. And I'm sure you will find some interesting bugs and vulnerabilities if you do that. So that's it for today's video. And don't forget to check out the other labs available on Portswigger's Web Security Academy. And of course, if you have questions, you can join us every week on live stream and drop them into the chat. We do our best to get to as many questions as possible. If you haven't already, check out the Academy page for full courses from TCM. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you next time.